live from Atlanta, Georgia, it's theCUBE, covering Ansible Fest 2019. Brought to you by Red Hat. Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE. We are broadcasting live here in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm John Furrow, Stu Miniman, my co-host. The Cube's coverage of Red Hat Ansible Fest. Um, this is probably one of the hottest topic areas that we've been seeing in enterprise tech emerging, along with observability. Automation and observability is the key topics here. Automation is the theme. Stu, Ansible, just finished their keynotes, keynote analysis general availability of their new platform, the Ansible automation platform is the big news. This is a big, I mean, it's, it seems nuanced for the general tech practitioner out there. What's Ansible doing? Why are we here? We saw the rise of network management turn into observability as the hottest category in the cloud, cloud 2.0. Companies going public, a lot of M&A activity, and observability is data driven. Automation's this other category that is just exploding in growth and change, huge impact to all industries. And it's coming from the infrastructure scale side where the blocking and tackling of DevOps has been. This is the focus of Ansible and their show, Automation for All, your analysis of the keynote, what's the most important thing going on here? Yeah, so John, as you said, automation is a super hot topic. Uh, you know, I was just at the New Relic show talking about observability last week. We've got the PagerDuty show also going on this week. Um, the, the automation is so critical. We know that IT can't keep up with things if they can't automate it. And it's not just re replacing some scripting. I loved in the keynote, uh, they talked about strategically thinking about automation. Uh, we've been watching the RPA uh, companies talking about automation. So there's lots of different automation, there's the right way to do it. And another thing, Angle, John, that we love covering is you know, what's going on with open source. You were just at the Open Core Summit in San Francisco. The Red Hat team, very clear, open source is not their business model. It is they use open source, and everything that Red Hat does is 100% open source, and that was core and key to what Ansible was and how it's created. This isn't a product pitch here, um, it's a community. Uh, you know, it, yeah. John, this is the sixth most active you know, repository in GitHub. So out of over 100 million repositories out there, the, the sixth most active. So that tells you that this is being used by the community. It's not a couple of companies using this, but it's a broad ecosystem. We hear Microsoft and Cisco, F5, lots of companies that are contributing, as well as just all of the end users. We hear JP Morgan uh, in the keynote this morning, so a lot of participation there. Uh, but you know, it is building out that suite with the platform that you talked about, and we're going to spend a lot of time in the next two days yeah. understanding this maturation and growth. Yeah, the uh, automation platform that they announced, that's the big news. Um, the general availability of their automation platform. And Stu, the word they're using here is scale. Okay, and this is something that you brought up the Open Core Summit, which I attended last week, was the inaugural conference. A lot of controversy, and this is a generational shift. We are seeing in the midst of our own eyes, right in front of us, on the ground floor, of a shift in open source community, um, how the platform of open source is evolving. What Amazon, now Azure, and Google, and the others are doing is, they're showing that scale has changed the game in how open source is going to not only grow and evolve, but shape application developers. And the reason why Ansible is so important right now in this conference is that we all know that when you stand up stuff, infrastructure, you got to configure the hell out of it. DevOps has always been infrastructure as code, and as more stuff gets scaled up, as more stuff gets provisioned, as more stuff gets built and created, the management and the controlling of the configurations, this has been a real hot spot. This has been an opportunity, and a problem. So, you know, everyone who's here, they're, they're active because you know what? This is a major pain point. This is a problem area that's an opportunity to take what is a blocking and tackling operational role, configurating, standing up infrastructure, enabling applications, and making it a competitive advantage. This is why the game is changing. We're starting to see platforms, not tools. Your analysis, are they positioned? Was this keynote successful? 
Yeah, John, you know, I, I really liked, uh, Robin Bergeron came out and talked about the key principles of what Ansible has done. It's simplicity, it's modularity, and it's learning from open source. This project was only started in 2012, so one of the things I always look at is, in the old days, you wanted, you know, to, to have that experience. There's no compression algorithm for experience. Today, if I could start from day one today and build with the latest tools, you know, heavily using DevOps, understanding all of the experience that's happened in open source, uh, we can move forward. So from 2012 to 2015, Red Hat uh, you know, acquired Ansible, uh, to today in 2019, they're, they're, they're making huge growth and helping companies really leverage and m mature their IT processes and move towards you know, true business innovation uh, with leveraging automation. Stu, this is not, and again, this is not for the fate of heart either. Again, these are rock star DevOps infrastructure folks who are evolving in, taking either network and or infrastructure uh, development to enable a software abstraction layer for applications. And this not, it's not a joke either. I mean, you got some big names up on stage. There's just one tweet I want to call out and get your reaction to. J.P. Morgan uh, on his presentation, the exec there. He, uh, was, the tweet came out from Christopher Festa. 500 developers are working to automate business processes leading to, among other benefits, 98% improvement in recovery times. What used to take six to eight hours to recover now takes two to five minutes. Christopher Festa. Stu. Yeah. So John, that's what we want, is how can we take these things that took you know, hours and I had to go through this ticketing process and make that change. What I loved of what Chris from J.P. Morgan said is he brought us inside and he said, look, to make this change, it took us a year of sorting through the security, the cyber, the, the control processes. We understand there's not just, you know, oh hey, let's sprinkle a little DevOps on everything and it's wonderful. We need to get you know, buy-in from the team you know, and it can spread between groups and you know, change that culture. It's something that you know, we've tracked in Red Hat for years in all of these environments. This is something that does require commitment um, because it's not just John taking, oh, I scripted something and, 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 and that's good. We need to be able to really look at these changes because automation, if we just automate a bad process, that's not going to help our business. We really need to make sure we understand what we're automating, the business value, and, and, and what is going, are going to be the ramifications to what we're doing. Well, one of the things I want to share with the folks watching is some research that we did at SiliconANGLE, the Cube, and Wikibon. It's part of our Cube Insights, Stu. I know you were part of this. We talked to a bunch of practitioners and customers, of dozens of, of, our, of our community members, and we found that observability, we just pointed out, has been you know, explosive category, that automation has been identified. We're putting a stake in the ground right here in the cube as one of the next big sectors that will rise up as a small little white space will become a massive market, automation. You watch that cloud 2.0 sector called automation. Why? The reasoning was this, and here's the results of our, of our survey. Automation is quickly becoming a critical foundational element of the network as enterprises focus on multi-cloud, network being infrastructure, servers, and storage. A multi-cloud rapid application development and deployment, software-defined, everything's happening. Pretty much, we've been covering that on theCUBE. And most enterprises are just grappling with this concept and see opportunities. The benefits that people see in automation, as we've discovered, Stu, are the following. One, focused, on, focused efforts for better results, efficiency. Security is a top driver on all these things, because you got to have security built into the software, and then automation is creating job satisfaction for these guys. I mean, they've been doing, this is mundane tasks being automated away, so people are happier, so job satisfaction. And finally, this is an opportunity to reskill. Stu, these are the key bullet points that we found in talking to our, of our community. Um, your reaction to those, those uh, results. Yeah, uh, John, I love that. We, you know, ultimately, we want to be able to provide not only better value to my ultimate end user, but I need to look internal, as you said, John. You know, how can I, you know, retool some of my Salesforce and get them engaged. And if you want to hire the millennials, they want to be just not be doing the drudgery. They want to do something where they feel that they are making a difference. And you know, you laid out a lot of good reasons why uh, it would help uh, and why people would want to uh, uh, get involved. Uh, John, you know, government. Uh, I, I've, I've talked to a number of government agencies when they talk about you know we changed that 40-year-old process and now we're doing things faster and better. And that means I can really hire that next generation. Of workforce, um, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to hire them uh, to just do things the old way. Stu, this is about cloud 2.0, this is about modernization. 
and you mentioned open source, uh, open core summit. That I think is a tell sign that open source is changing. The communities are changing. This is going to be a massive wave. Again, we've been chronicling this cloud 2.0 that we, we coined that term. We're trying to identify those key points. Obviously observability, automation. But look, at, at the end of the day, you got to have a focus effort to make the job go better. You heard some JP Morgan pointing out minutes versus hours. This is the benefits of infrastructure as code. At the end of the day, employee satisfaction, the people that you want to hire to reskill that can be redeployed into new roles. Analytics, uh, math, quantitative analysis versus the mundane tasks. Automation is going to impact all aspects of the stack. So final question, Stu. What are you expecting for the next two days? We're going to be here for two days. What do you expect to hear from our guests? Yeah, so John, one of the things I want to really look at is, is as you mentioned, Infrastructure is the, where this all started. So, you know, how do I easily deploy a VM? You know, Ansible's there. Uh, you know, VMware, I've already talked to a number of people in the virtualization community, they love and embrace Ansible. We, we saw Microsoft up on stage, loving and embracing. As we move towards microservice architectures, uh, containerization, and all of these cloud native deployments, uh, you know, how is Ansible and this community doing? Where are the stumbling blocks? Uh, to be honest, from what I hear, John, coming into this, Ansible's been doing well. Red Hat has helped them grow even more, and the expectation is that IBM will help proliferate this in even further. The traditional competitors to Ansible, you think about the chefs and puppets of the world, have been struggling with that cloud native world. John, I know I see Ansible when I go to the cloud shows and I hear customers talking about it, so Ansible seems to be making that transition towards cloud native well, but there are other threats in the cloud native world. Uh, you know, if I, if I say, you know, the, when, I, when I go to the serverless uh, you know, conference, I, I don't, I have not yet heard uh, you know, where this fits into the environment, so we always know that, that next generation of technology, you know, how, how will uh, the, you know, this automation move forward? As Red Hat starts to get much more proliferated into major enterprises with IBM, which will take their, extend their lead even further in the enterprise, it's an opportunity for Ansible. And the community angle is interesting. I saw a tweet, still. I'll get your community angle real quick on this. I saw a tweet from NetApp. Their tagline at their booth is, simplify, automate, and orchestrate. Sounds like they're leading into the Kubernetes world, containers, you got to start thinking about software abstractions. You know, this, is, this ain't the you know, provisioning hardware anymore. Whole new ball game. Your assessment of Ansible's community presence, mentioned that was a tweet from Red Hat, I mean uh, NetApp, What's your take on the community angle here? Oh, John, it's all about community. The, the GitHub stats speak for themselves. Uh, this is very much a community event. Um, you know, kudos to the team here. A lot on the diversity inclusion effort. Um, so really pushing those things forward. Uh, John, something we always notice at the tech shows, uh, the ratio of uh, you know, uh, gender is way more diverse at an event like this. We know we see it in the developer uh, communities that there, there's more diversity in there. So, yeah. uh, you Still know, a lot gender of guys, and, and ethnicity, <laughs> sure there is. Uh, by the way, uh, when they took over this hotel, all of the bathrooms are, uh, I, I believe it's, you know, it's gender neutral, so you can use whatever bathroom you, you, know, you, you want there. I'll just so. make sure I'm using the right pronoun when I'm going, saying hello to people. Stu, thanks for uh, the commentary. Pleasure, John. It's keynote analysis, I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman, breaking down why we are here, why Ansible, why is, Automation important, we believe automation will be a killer category. We're going to see a lot of growth here. And again, the impact is with machine learning and AI, this is where it all starts. Automating the data, the technology, and the configuration is going to empower the next generation modern enterprise. More live coverage from Ansible Fest after this short break.